Do not call Pulitzer Prize winning war photographer Lindsay Adario an adrenaline junkie. She's not. Don't call her fearless. She's not that either. What she does is terrifying and it does scare her. The searing scenes she shoots sometimes make her cry so much she cannot see behind her lens. But she goes back to the front lines, to famines, because as she wrote in her memoir, it's what I do. Four New York Times journalists were held captive. Even after being kidnapped twice in Libya and Iraq, after being assaulted and traumatized, it's still what she does. They are all home safe now. But there's a question in this era, when the powerful tell lies and make people doubt, how much does the work of a witness matter? She happens to think it matters more now than ever. So she spent some time with us in the National Studio to talk of the costs of opening eyes. Welcome to the National. Thank you. We've tried to uh, wow. decorate the place a little bit for you. Wow, it's amazing. As hard as it is to look at them, can you hear any of these? Like, are the sounds of any one of these really loud in your head? I mean, Libya, for sure. Um, this one up here? Yeah. And Korangal. That was... That's Afghanistan? Yeah, that's in Afghanistan, so that's 2007. And what are you hearing when you look at that? I mean, that's right after an ambush. So we were hit from three sides by the Taliban, uh, and it was just cracking, you know. Mm -hmm. so there was the wailing and moaning, and that, that's a funeral uh, for Mama Sise. She was a young woman who bled to death during pregnancy, during childbirth. And a completely normal pregnancy, Yeah. right? She, has, she was pregnant with twins, delivered the first baby in the village, and the second baby wouldn't come out. She had to take a canoe across a river after having just delivered the first baby. And then, uh, like, about six hours over bumpy roads in an ambulance to get to the hospital, that's when I met her. And I photographed the delivery of the second baby, and then she started bleeding. And no one, like, the midwives were just sort of mopping up the blood and saying, oh, it's normal, it's okay. And well, you knew. I knew something was wrong. So I actually ran to try to find the doctor, the one doctor in the whole province. And he was in surgery, and I went into surgery. I put on scrubs, I went in. I said, I think this woman's dying. And he said, well, I'm busy. And I went back, and they picked her up and carried her to him, and she died. Yeah. That scene didn't just rattle Adario. It touched nerves in important places. Time magazine put out an eight-page spread that caught the eye of the pharmaceutical company Merck, which then put aside $500 million to fight maternal death. That's making a difference with a photograph, but it doesn't always work that way. These are American soldiers? Correct. So this is during the Battle of Fallujah. So this is in November of 2004. And there were so many wounded American Marines coming out of the Battle of Fallujah that they cleared out the inside of a cargo aircraft and literally flew them on the floor of the plane and they were all seated on the walls. And this is how they were flown to Ramstein in Germany for treatment. I don't know that Americans had really seen pictures like this. They had, at that I point. don't think they had. I had never had access like this. And I, this was for Life magazine. Right. So we got this incredible, unprecedented access. And Life held the photos through the reelection of Bush. And my photo editor said, my feeling is the editor in chief doesn't think the American public can handle seeing these images. And I was furious. And I said, you know, how dare you send me to Fallujah if you don't even have the guts to publish what, what I'm right. seeing. And so luckily, I called the New York Times Magazine, and they published them. But that's why you take a picture yeah, like of that, course. right? Of is, course. Is, is... I mean, yeah. The moments she captures don't leave Adario. Sometimes the faces of people at their lowest have ended up being the one she sees in her mind when she's in trouble. Photographer Lindsay Adario was one of them. The group was beaten and threatened with death. Lindsay that was certainly the case in March of 2011. Adario was with Anthony Shadid, Tyler Hicks, and Stephen Farrell when they were grabbed by Muammar Gaddafi's men, kidnapped, beaten, and moved around. Adario knew enough about the sexual violence women face to fear the worst. I've heard the stories, I've heard the testimonies that I've heard of women in the Democratic Republic of Congo, women in Darfur. Um, you know, I feel like I got off easy. I mean, these are women who were raped, they were gang raped. Their stories are horrific. And so for me in Libya, um, you know, over the time of our kidnap, I was touched, I was groped, I was, you know, tied up, blindfolded, beaten up. But for me, it was nothing compared to what the women that I documented went through. 
But I did sort of turn to them for a source of strength in the middle of the kidnapping in Libya. Like, I remember one night we were in prison and we were all terrified. We had no idea how long we would be held for and what they would do to us. And I remember thinking to myself, you know, if those women in Congo and Darfur can hold their head up and do this, I can get through this. Mm -hmm. And I just kept telling myself, like, I can do it. And that's sort of, they were really a source of strength for me. And when you went home, you got pregnant. I did. When I came home from Libya, I was still ambivalent because I think as a woman, a professional woman, mm -hmm. especially a woman in this job where we travel all the time, you know, it's very hard to figure out what life will look like as a mother. And so I didn't really have any role models at that time. I didn't know any other photographers, war photographers, mm -hmm. who were mothers. And so I was terrified. You know, I was terrified to sort of go down that path. And I remember just turning to my husband and saying, forget it, like we need to start life. Like I've had enough of death and I can't do this right now. And but I got pregnant like, right away. <laughs> Life got better and work didn't stop, but the world changed a bit and the urgency to bear witness at times feels even more acute. Is it getting harder or easier to make an impact with images in this climate? Harder, I think. Why? Because we're so bombarded with images and we're so bombarded by social media, by violence, by blood. You know, I don't think an image has to be graphic to be powerful. I think an image has to be subtle, but it has to tell a story. And I think, you know, we see so many images every single day that most people, they don't pay attention anymore. I think people's attention span is just almost nothing. And I wonder, does it drive you yes, even more? Yes, it drives me even more because I think, you know, we have a president in America who says journalists are the enemy of the people. He says fake news, everything is fake news. He lies basically every day of his presidency. And I think it's really important as a journalist to show the importance of journalism with integrity, the importance of being there, the importance of calling out leaders around the world who lie. And so, you know, I covered Darfur for six straight years and there was a case where I was in chat and there had been a massacre of government soldiers. And President Bashir went on TV and he said, you know, that didn't happen, no government soldiers were killed. And we went to the border and found a truckload of rebels and said, like, hey, did this happen? And they said, yes. And we said, well, can you take us? And they were like, well, it's super dangerous. There are Antonovs flying overhead and they can bomb, you know. And we were like, look, we have to see it to report on it for the New York Times. And we went and there were bodies clear across the desert. And that picture was on the front page of the New York Times. And you, you know, when you have a picture as proof, you cannot lie. You know, the fundamental fact that a photographer has to be there is, is really important at this time in history. It is the curse of the world right now that there are a lot of troubled places she needs to go to next. South Sudan, maybe Yemen. It's our great fortune there's a Lindsay Adario ready to be there. <laughs>